Hi parents, Jen Nisa with Fit for Life Physical Therapy here. And I wanted to um, come on and just create a short video by way of explaining the results from the injury prevention screens we did for your kiddos a few weeks ago. I really wanted to try to find a way to get in front of you all, but getting everybody back together to have an in-person meeting just didn't seem feasible. So I'm recording a short video to explain the results that we have put together and try to answer some questions and just explain a little bit of what we are sharing with, with all of your kiddos. So as of today, <clears throat> the results have been compiled and Mark, Mark Schaefer will have all of the folders with the results for all of the kids at practice today. I know it's spring break and it might take into next week for Schaefer to get the folders to the respective coaches, but just know that the results are in and the quickest way to access them is for your kid to find Coach Schaefer. And for sure, everybody should have them um, when school resumes and regular schedules be resume next week. So what we have put together for every kid that we screened is um, a folder. There are, um, there's information on both sides of the folder. So just a couple different uh, clarification things. The first thing that you'll see when you open the left-hand side of the folder is a letter. The first time we did the injury prevention screens, we did them just for Coach Schaefer and the cross country boys. And um, Dr. Sopcic wrote a little bit of a letter and it explained the shoe testing that he did and the strength testing that he does for the lower quarter. So feel free to give that a read. Like I said, it explains the shoe testing and the glute medius and hip strengthening. <clears throat> what I will say is a couple of the things referenced in his letter we didn't do this time. So he mentions the some testimonials for the shoe testing. Those aren't included in the letter. And if your kid tested weak in their hip muscles, we didn't necessarily include specific exercises for those. What I would say is if you tested weak in your hip muscles, it's documented on your findings and you can discuss that with your individual coaches. A lot of times the, um, the coaches have their um, pre and post you know, run drills. A lot of times the coaches already have the kids working on some hip strengthening and the coach can review with them what they need to do to increase that. If, of course, if you have specific questions, you can always ask us if there's something specific your kids should be doing, but the, we didn't put general exercises other than what we found with our, the other part of the screening. So the testing that Dr. Sobchak does for shoes did cause a little bit of confusion. Uh, we got some feedback from parents saying their kid's shoe was tested and all they knew is it wasn't good for them. So his letter explains it a little bit. What, what I would suggest is that testing that he does for the shoes, if the kid is already in the right shoe for their foot type, his muscle testing is an excellent way to tell if it's the right shoe for them. Many of your kids, we needed to look at their foot type and make an assessment for the even the category of shoe that they should be in. So if you got a low score on his muscle test because your shoes weren't good for you, don't be concerned, you probably weren't in the right shoe. We made recommendations based on what we saw for everybody's foot type on the category of shoe, and you'll see that on your finding. You're welcome to take that, go to a running store, tell them you need this category of shoe. They can give you different types, you know, Asics, New Balance, Brooks, Nike. And Dr. Sobchak is always available to retest outside of practice time if that's something that you wanna continue. So I just wanted to clarify that. So first thing you'll see on the left-hand side is his letter. You won't find any links for testimonials and you won't find specific hip exercises as mentioned in his letter. The next thing that you'll see is the screening technique, the screening tool that we used. We made copies, so we have the original, but this has all of the things that we tested that go into your specific findings. So you have a copy of that. 
The next thing you'll see on that left-hand side is um, your gait analysis findings. So for most of you, we got two. I had a few technical difficulties. Um, a couple of the kids' running assessments didn't take or were anyways. Um, a little bit of connectivity issues. So they are both the run and the walk for most of you. I did a very brief, you can tell a lot just by looking at the test. What I will say is if you see anything that's in green, it means your kids findings are within sort of the normal average for their age and demographics and things that they entered. If you see something that is in red it's outside of the normal normative data anything in red and anything in yellow is just outside the normative data so you can tell quite a bit just by looking at your kids um, assessment the walking would be on top uh, for most of them in the there's a practitioner's comment section i gave just a little bit of a recap of what we found um, most of the time the run i just gave you what it showed again we analyzed this data for 18 of you so um we did the best we could <laughs> so that's what's on the left hand side of the page on the right hand side of the folder uh, the first typo you'll notice is at the very top it says that it's for shard and cross country 80 percent is good enough because they were already printed by the time these were done and so it, this is the spring of 2024 so that is correct but it should say shard and track and field it is our injury prevention running rewired screen. So what you'll see on the cover sheet is your kid's name, the score they got on their shoe, and then in this column, everything that checked a box on the template is listed here with the corresponding correction on the left-hand side. And then there is a stack of exercises that go along with the specific things that they found so you'll see what the issue was with your kid and then you'll see what the thing is that they need to work on um, obviously this comes with a little bit of the disclaimer um, we did this based on a screen we had different providers looking at your kid the we did our best to kind of synthesize it together if your child was having pain there were a few kids that had scoliosis there were a few kids that were having shoulder pain or back pain if you try any of these exercises and they don't feel good and they're uncomfortable you shouldn't do them and you should seek somebody's help with it i tried to make a notation if we knew that about some of the kids um there is also uh, the explanation of the type of foot that we found that your kid had and the shoe that would be appropriate for them. And the other thing that I wanted to say is almost all of the kids, um, there, are, there are two pages that are just a little bit tricky. One was the posture test. So when we look at it, the kid, the runner's posture, we wanted to assess where they felt their weight in their feet because that has to do with where their center of gravity is. If they felt the weight in their feet anywhere else besides the middle of their foot, they were given a posture correction movement. The posture test page is included for those children, and it it is pretty self-explanatory. But you have to if you if you had an atypical weight shift pattern, we there is an exercise to try to correct that. We want their weight to be perceived in the middle of their feet. Some of the other things we found, like their tight shoulders or their limited thoracic spine or their tight hip flexors, are things that will help this normalize, but there is a correction for each of those posture shifts in on this page. If you need help with it, because it is a little bit movement oriented, reach out for help. The other thing that many of the kids had an issue with was the control of their big toe, whether or not they could lift it up uh, with good control or push it down with good control. Most of the kids got, if they have a recommendation for toe yoga, let's see if I can find it real quick. Toe yoga um, isn't necessarily an exercise that is, is in here, but if they had trouble lifting or pushing their big toe down, here it is. If they had trouble getting their big toe down with, without collapsing their arch, they were given an exercise to do. And if they had trouble raising their big toe, they were given an exercise to do. So the page looks like this, and it describes if this is your problem, this is what you do, and if this is your problem, this is what you should do. 
If it says that your kid needs to do toe yoga, literally that just means practicing with your feet on the ground, lifting your big toe up while the other toes stay down. Sorry, that wouldn't be the big toe, would it? <laughs> lifting the big toe up while the other toes stay down and then vice versa, big toe down while the other toes go up. That's what toe yoga means. It's practicing big toe flexion with toe extension and big toe extension with little toe flexion. That's what toe yoga means. So um, with, then with the exception of, we didn't always give specific exercises for hip strengthening. If it says you need that, talk to your coach. If they need help, reach out to us and we will give uh, some more specific directions on that. That should be the recap. Um, you all have access to us now by phone or by email for our respective offices. For Raven and myself, our business cards are in here. Um, and if you do have questions and you want clarification, you're not quite sure if you're doing something right or that, or maybe something doesn't make sense, uh, it's possible that we had a little bit of an error in our assessment just because we did 18 of these that day. So thank you for letting us screen your kids. Let us know how this goes. And if you have any questions, then you know where to find us. Thank you guys. Have a great day.